This week, Garmin have released new firmwares for their current model Edge cycling GPS units. This includes the 530, the 830, the 1030, and the 1030 Plus, with the little baby 130 Plus also getting three minor updates. Today's video is primarily focusing on these four units here, which effectively have a unified feature set. So what you see new presented today will be across all of these units here. These firmwares have been in beta for quite some time. I've been testing them in beta and also with this new public release. I've been happy with the results. And before digging into the changelog, here are my top five new features of this new firmware. Kicking off with number one, there's a better battery display for electronic group set components. My SRAM ETAP Access equipped gravel bike has three batteries that I want to know about. And now I can show those on screen with this new graphical display for the left lever, the right lever, and the rear derailleur. If I was to have a front derailleur, which I don't, that will also show on screen. This new group set component battery display also applies to the new Shimano Di2, where there's a battery in the front levers and also one for the back connecting both derailleurs. Back onto the SRAM Access side of things, there's now a no more gears beep on the SRAM Access paired systems. So if you're on a one by, you're all the way up the top and you go to change again, you'll get a beep. Same goes for all the way down the bottom in your hardest gear. There's no more gears, your head unit will let you know. Third on my list of top five things with this new firmware change is the reintroduction of the all clear beep if you have a Varia radar paired to your head unit. Now this was there in a previous firmware and then removed. That all clear beep has always been there for the 515 and the 315 if you've paired via the Varia app on your phone. But for whatever reason, it appeared on the head units and then disappeared. Now what this all clear beep does is, well, exactly as you'd expect. If a vehicle is coming, you'll get an alert. And once everything is all clear, you'll get another distinct tone to let you know everything is clear behind you. This is optional, you can turn that on or off as you please. Next up, number four on my list of top five things in this firmware set, GPS now turns off properly in indoor mode. I use these to record multiple power meters at the same time in the Llama Lab with no GPS on. And in recent updates, it's been telling me GPS signal has been lost. So that's now been fixed. And lastly, on my top five updates for this firmware set, device to device transfer has been fixed. So they claim. Now I've tested this with one route file from one Garmin unit to another. It has worked. I'll dig into this a little bit more before really confirming that. But good to see this may actually work now. This allows you to send workout files or routes from one unit to the other. So if you're with a friend on a cycling trip or something like that and you want to transfer a route, it can be done easily. Let me know if it works for you or not. Okay, now onto the good stuff, the full changelog. So I've pulled up the 830 changelog, which will also apply to the 530, 1030, and 1030 plus. So Let's get stuck into it. Fixed device to device transfers. Yay, I've tested that once. Let me know how yours goes. Fixed back to start issue when selecting most direct route. Okay, so it's a routing update for these. Fixed issue where live track could not be started. You can now do a fast live track start when you're out on the road. You can just drag down the top menu, scroll across to live track, hit go. I use that quite often if I don't remember to start that at the start of my ride. Added a new tone for the radar that plays when radar transitions to the green threat level. I like that, it's still a threat level of green. So that's what I covered just before in my top five. Added support for 12-speed Shimano Di2 group sets. Improved shifting sensor battery data fields. Covered those in my top five. Improved bike light network connection stability. So yep, the Varia radars with the light are also included in that. Improved course point display and added new types. Again, routing functionality. Improved course always show functionality. Improved physio true up data recording. Improved indoor trainer control. Improved sensor search flow. Garmin have updated some routing avoidance settings here. So previously a user could not create a cycling route on interstates, even if the interstate did allow cycling. So again, more routing updates. Fixed an issue causing unnecessary sensor software update prompts. The edge units are quite handy. They will also pull down firmwares for any Garmin connected sensor, such as the radars or the vectors or similar, but they will get very naggy if you say, no, no, don't update. So. Uh, my RTL 515 has an update to do. One of these units was nagging me for a while. I've hit no a while back. I haven't seen it since, so hopefully that's less nagging. I will do the update when I'm ready. Fixed power calibration prompt when waking from sleep mode. Fixed history line color. Fixed an issue with left or right power balance recording. That's an interesting one. Fixed an issue with GPS not turning off on indoor mode. That made the top five. A workout mode fix, so fixed power graph during workout steps with no power target. Fixed an issue where on-device training plan would not allow riding one-step workouts. Fixed issues with Connect IQ data field alerts and widget pages. And the one we always love to see on changelogs, improved general device stability. That's a catch-all of 
we just can't be bothered typing out the rest of this changelog. Anyhow, that's the swag of updates for the Edge units. But before I forget, we will cover this little baby as well. The Edge 130 Plus gets improved ant connectivity. They've changed the incident detection setting for Cyclocross. I've pretty much just switched that off. Cyclocross would effectively have these units bouncing everywhere anyway. Well, the races that I've seen. And they've added a climb approaching banner. That's the little baby one. Doesn't get the whole swag of updates with this for good reason. It's very, very small. It doesn't have anywhere near the processing power of these units. So there we are, the firmware updates for November 2021 across the Garmin Edge cycling units. If your unit is connected to your phone or your home Wi-Fi, it's likely those updates have already pulled down. Turn them on, the update's probably there, ready to go. If not, grab a USB cable, load up Garmin Express and force a sync. It's always handy to do that anyway, as the map updates for these units only arrive over USB cable. As always, thanks for watching this one. Let me know how you go with these updates. We'll see you soon.